get quirky. Let's get quirky. What is up? We're glad you are here. This is Let's Get Quirky Live. My name is James Thorne, and I am Chief People Officer here at Quirk. And we're glad you join us. So what is Let's Get Quirky Live? Well, I have a life motto. I'm always one person away from changing the course of my future. So that means I got to meet as many people as possible because you never know what's going to happen. And literally all my past experiences leading up to today with the business and the people on our team have been by interacting and meeting incredible people along the way and have shaped and formed where I'm at. So I'm even excited about today because the man that I'm bringing on uh, has also shaped where we're at as a business and me personally a whole lot um, as a coach. But before we get to that, um, this is something that we like to do every Thursday at 3 p.m. So if you want to join us at 3 p.m. Central Time, you can do that live and you can ask questions yourself. You can jump on the chat and comment and interact doing it live. That's why we're doing it live. But if not, hey, we get it. You're busy and a lot going on. So if you want to catch us on YouTube later, most of us are doing that when it's more convenient. So hit subscribe <clears throat> below so that you can get these videos as soon as they drop every week. And we'll be sending out emails to our list when these videos go on YouTube. So we're excited about today. We're on episode 20. So we're in 20 of these, learning a lot along the way and getting to bring on some incredible people. So a reminder, if again, if you want to comment or ask questions throughout this and you are live, jump on in, ask questions. I'll do my best to pay attention. We're about 15, 20 seconds ahead of you. So there's a little lag, but the future's looking great. And let's just do this like we do normally. So let's let's introduce our guests like we do every week. <clears throat> He's an award-winning Fort Worth entrepreneur that is known for his ability to start and grow industry-leading companies. He is the founding CEO of Success Fort Worth Executive Coaching. Together with his team of nationally certified coaches, they are helping business owners and executive leaders find greater success, satisfaction, and freedom from their personal and professional lives. He's a man of great integrity, and I personally value his wisdom. He's my mentor, coach, and friend, and I'm glad to introduce Tony Ford. Hey, Tony, how's it going? Great, how are you doing, James? Doing well, man. Thanks for joining us. Well, it's good to be here. It's good to see you again. I love that shirt. <laughs> Thank you. I wish it was in my size. Hey, well, we can find one, I'm sure. Can you hook me up? <laughs> we can try to find one. Um, yeah, thanks. So, guys, Tony Ford, like I mentioned, coach, mentor, friend, uh, he's someone that we've gotten to hang out with the past few years and gotten to know more about each other, but he's helped shape a lot of where I'm even at today, there's been three or four key people in my life for the past few years, and Tony's one of them. And I just am glad that he's joining us today. So, Tony, let's just share first a little bit about yourself, you and your family. Well, if you want to know about me, you have to know about Jane. Uh, she's my wife. We've been married for 43 years. Uh, she walked into my restaurant one night when I was a restaurant manager for Steak and Ale way, way back before there was a day. Uh, and three months later, uh, she led me to Christ. A year later, we got married, and we've been holding hands for 43 years since then. Um, we have two wonderful grown sons, three granddaughters. Uh, one lives in Colorado, one lives in Washington. Um, I've been an entrepreneur all my life. Uh, you know, people that start and run their own companies, that lead, uh, have always been my tribe. Um, I just love finding niches in, in markets that serve people and finding ways to create companies in those. Uh, the three things that our companies have always tried to do through the years, uh, honor God, uh, take care of our people, and if we could, change the world, but uh, wasn't required. If, if we couldn't honor God and, and take care of our people, we didn't even start. So uh, it's worked out really well, and I guess it's been, I guess I'm company number eight now, uh, which sounds like a lot, but you know, in 40 years, you can do a lot of stuff. So, uh, wouldn't, wouldn't want to do it anywhere else but Fort Worth. I love the city. I love what we do here. I love the relational culture that we have as opposed to transactional. And uh, Success Fort Worth is really my, hopefully, maybe my last uh, attempt to preserve that relational culture. 
and keep it for you guys, for you young guys and girls that are going to come along and, and do it with a handshake or a, a fist bump or whatever we're going to get to do in the future. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, yeah, so you are very well connected in Fort Worth and have spent a lot of time here building businesses and people. Um, but let's just, just for a minute, just so I know there's a lot of history there, uh, to share some of the companies that you've had some success in. I know there's obviously we all learn and had failures, but um, well, share some success stories that you've had over the years with some companies. Well, one of the first companies, uh, you know, we came here to go to seminary. I, I, th I thought I was going to be a pastor. <laughs> Um, but when I decided I didn't have a pastor's heart, I went out and said, okay, how can I, got, how can I honor God by building companies that take good care of our people? That's good. And so I partnered with a man and we started the first chain of one hour photo finishing stores. We called it Flash Photo. Did that for several years, sold it. Started a company that uh, was called Sidelights and we ended up reflectorizing America's trains and trucks. So when you look at that red and silver reflective striping on the side of trucks, um, that's us and uh, sold that company uh, about six years later and uh, started another company that sold tanning lotion and tanning beds. And that's really Jane's success. Uh, the mayor asked me to start a place called the Fort Worth Business Assistance Center back when we'd lost 50,000 jobs back in 1995. And I had just started this little bitty distribution company. Jane uh, had spent 17 years with IBM and, and I said, sweetheart, the mayor wants me to start this other thing to help people get back into uh, work. But I've started this other company. Would you leave IBM and run it? And she said, no, <laughs> because she already had one entrepreneur in the family, but eventually she said yes. Anyway, she took that from, you know, basically a popsicle stand size company uh, over 14 years. She grew it into the second largest distributor of tanning lotion in the country. Wow. And so that's where she, she became an entrepreneur. And, uh, then when we sold that company, took some time off to speak, write, do some other things. And then some people came along and asked me uh, if I'd be willing to help them create the first television network all about the horse lifestyle. And, you know, we're the Western horse capital of the world here in Fort Worth. And so I partnered with a world champion cutter and a 30-year veteran of the television industry. And together we, we launched Ride Television. And now it's on, well, you can get it on Dish. You can get it all over the world, really. I think we have about 30 million viewers at this point. Um, but after two years, I stepped down as the founder and CEO of that company because while I knew how to create a television network, I didn't know how to run one. And so I turned that over to my television partner, and he's done a fabulous job since then. And uh, I went back to school and learned, got my certifications to be an executive coach. Awesome. And started and started success for worth for that purpose, um, and now we have. I think we have. Last time I looked, we have like six coaches, and the whole idea is, you know, coach is a trust relationship. It's a fit, yep. and so I want people to know that um, if I'm not a fit, they've got five or six other choices. Right. So. Now today, now you start Success Fort Worth is the name. So Success Fort Worth is the name of the business. Yes. But you stepped out, and that's to create team, right? Be around more coaches, more executive coaches. Um, it's not just you. Um, but why? Why do you think your role was shifted now? You're like, okay, why? Why do coaching now versus just go start another successful money making business? Well, I think I think when you when you've sat in the big chair your whole life and you've created companies. You, you have a unique view of how stressful it is and how difficult it is. It's very, very hard on the leader, owner. It's very hard on their family. Uh, done poorly, it's hard on the community and the employees. And so I was fortunate to have great mentors as I came along, but not everybody does. Yeah. And so in coaching, you know, coaching only does two things. It creates awareness and it creates actions out of that awareness. And you pretty much drop the mic. It's not therapy. It's not counseling. Right. It's uh, not mentoring. There are some elements of those things in it. But at its heart, it's about getting things done, changing things that need changing. And so as I coach these business owners, I might be affecting 100 families that work there. Right. And vicariously through that, a school system and the community. 
And again, it's all a part of this global mission I've always had to try to preserve this culture of, of relationships and doing what we'll say we'll do here in Fort Worth. Um, because we have a lot of people moving in here, hundreds every week. Yeah. Uh, and that's wonderful. You know, I was yeah. born overseas, lived overseas a lot in my life. Um, and we want them to bring their ideas and bring their, their, their culture with them. But we also want them to understand that we have a culture and it's not based on money. And it's not based on how much you can make versus how much you can make or what kind of house you live in. Fort Worth's always been unique that way. And if we're going to preserve that for your generation and hopefully your children's, then we have to model it. Yeah. And so a lot of the, a lot of the mentoring I do on the side besides coaching is around, Hey, um, let's have good marriages. Yeah. Let's have healthy schools. Let's have healthy churches. Let's not make it the government's responsibility to take care of people who have needs. Let's, let's take that responsibility on ourselves. We are, we own businesses. We have resources. Yeah. Let's use them for that. And I, and I think the whole thing, when everybody does a little bit, a lot gets done. And I think that's God honoring. And I think it builds good community. No, that's good. So what would the process look like then? Maybe specifically for you or just in general for coaching? What does that really look like for someone that's a business leader, a business owner? Well, not everybody coaches the same. Coaching is in its purest form has no agenda. So I'm not, if somebody sits down with, a, with an issue they want to talk through, <clears throat> I'm not going to tell them what to do, okay? I'm going to ask them, why is it important to you? And they're going to share that with me. And we're going to explore the reason why it's an important issue. Yeah. And then I'm going to find out more from them about how they got there and what they want to happen next. Yeah. Because a lot of times what we find out is that, that people circle in their heads you know, we, we, we kind of, it's like, it's like getting locked up in a round room and trying to find the corner you just <laughs> going around and around. Right? Um, and so what I do is I say, well, there's, there's a door in this room. There's actually more than one. Yeah. Would you be interested in getting out of here? And so they go, yeah, is that possible? Well, yeah, it's possible. You'll have to do the work, but sure it's possible. And so I start, you know, it's all about options. It's about realizing that, that we're not as constrained as we think we are. Right. And that there's a lot more resources that are disposable than maybe we're even aware of. And, and it, it helps. I think if you're going to hire a coach, the first thing you've got to decide is, do I trust this person? Now, I know trust has to be earned. Right. But personality quirks. I mean, if, if, if the person sitting across from you as a potential coach you just don't like them, they're not going to be effective for you. Right. Okay. And the other thing is how experienced are they? Yeah. Did they, did they get trained? Did they get certified? The, the international coaching federation is the governing body of the largest number of coaches uh, in the world, about 30,000 of us all around the world. And the training is very rigorous and the requirements to practice are very rigorous. Yeah. And we, we have a 13, uh, 13 element code of ethics. The first being confidentiality. Hmm. Um, you know, when somebody talks to me, they're just talking to me and whatever they share with me is not going any further. Right. And so, but there's another part of it. And that is how long has this person been in the community and how connected are they? Yeah. Because a lot of, a lot of times I'll hear something from one of my clients is why I, I have a need for this and I'll go, Oh, well, I know a good vendor for that. Right. You know, I, I send a lot of people over to you when they start talking to me about needing marketing. Yes. Because, you, because you got, well, you do good work. I appreciate I mean, that. Earn that. And so I send them to people that I trust. I, I've sent them to people that I've paid money to over the years. Mm -hmm. to build buildings for me or, or attorneys or accountants or marketing folks like you. Um, and so that's not coaching, but it's helpful. That's true. <laughs> Well, we're in a world today where I feel like over this, I mean, I'm, I'm young in this game, but over the past so many years, I feel like everyone's just coming out of the dark and like, oh, I'm a coach, I'm a coach, I'm a coach, everyone's a coach. Yeah. And, uh, and I think that's a good point because how do you know when they're qualified? How do you know if they're a good fit? Um, and uh, obviously there's probably a lot of incredible people out there, but I think those are, those are good points, uh, especially for me. When we, I even met Tony, it was through a relationship that I trusted. 
and it was like, hey, you need to talk to so-and-so and brought us to a lunch and we interacted and like, hey, let's hang out. And um, and I've got to meet some other incredible people through that, which is great. But uh, so what what would be a good cadence like for coaching in general as a business owner, business leader? What does that really look like? How often, how long does it need to be? Um, you know, I, I was sharing with you, in the, you know, before we started that I had to break a lot of the rules of normal coaching. <laughs> But it's really because of the people I coach. Yeah. Uh, if you coach somebody that that's just a, a normal, I'm gonna call them a normal leader because I think as entrepreneurs owning our own places, we're a little bit abnormal. <laughs> um, but you know, Dr. Zeus said you have to be odd to be number one. <laughs> so, so a lot of us are kind of odd. Uh. <laughs> so a normal coaching, a normal coaching engagement, the coach would meet with you probably for 45 minutes, maybe every other week, maybe every week. Yeah. Um, and, and that it would probably last, depending on, on what goals you're trying to accomplish, it might last, the engagement might last three to six months of coaching. Right. Uh, because I coach almost exclusively business owners and leaders, uh, I coach for 90 minutes because I want them to have plenty of time to tell their story because so much changes in a week in their world. Oh, gosh. And they're usually dealing with a lot of people issues. Yeah. Which are usually pretty complicated. And then I meet with them every week. Because again, it, it just moves along so so fast, right? Um, and my average client I work with so far probably has averaged two years. Wow! But it's not because they're not smart. I mean, they're very smart. <laughs> um, it's because their lives are very complicated, and because they're growing. Yeah. So the issues that we were talking about when they engaged me have long been settled and figured out, mm -hmm. and as a part of their growth. Um, new issues have arisen that they've never seen before. Yeah. And so because coaching is a, is a process of exploration, you know, they come back and say, well, I'm going to do this. I'm going to build this building or I'm going to set up a satellite office over in Dallas or Houston or something. And who should I send over there to run it? I'm thinking mm -hmm. about this person. Of course, by then I know all about their different people and their strengths and weaknesses. And I'll say, well, you've mentioned him a lot of times, but you've never mentioned that he's good by himself. And you're going to put him over there by himself. And they go, oh, yeah. Yeah. And then I'll mention, but, you know, that young lady that you keep mentioning, you know, she goes over and above everything that you've ever expected. And she's got a lot of initiative and she does that on her own. Have you considered maybe putting her over there? Yeah, she would be a good fit. So, you know, as I learn about their companies and their people, I'm able to I don't have the day to day responsibilities they have. Yeah. And so my mind is focused on problem solving with them, not trying to make a payroll, not trying to make a profit, not trying to figure out, you know, who stole what, you know. Right. right. Um, so I have an advantage that they don't have. And I recognize that. Sure. So and this is me and curiosity, too, because I know a lot when I'm dealing with something, it's not always just about the business, a lot of personal things mm -hmm. as well. So what, what, what do you think percentages or how does that mix when people needing coaching, but it ends up being a lot about family or your spouse or how does that work? Well, because I come from a, from a, you know, growing business background, a lot of people come to me because they want help with their businesses. Right. Very, very shortly after our, <laughs> probably in our first session, we start talking about issues with their husbands or wives or children or parents-in-law if they have children yeah. um, and so I coach the whole person somebody asked me one time they said are you a business coach and I said well yeah are you a life coach I said well I guess uh, are you a nutrition coach I said well two out of three is not bad <laughs> so, so I said no I, I said I hope I'm a good coach yeah I said I hope I hope what I do helps you in every area of your life it is fascinating to me, though, over, over the last several years, um, when I coach men, uh, men business owners and leaders, um, it's not unusual in a couple of months to get a note from their wives <laughs> that, that says something like, hey, I really appreciate you coaching John. He's a totally different guy at home. He's taking better care of me and the kids. He's coming home at night instead of staying at the office. And if he ever decides to not have you as his coach, here's my cell number. Please call me immediately. <laughs> uh, 
That's so awesome. Um, no, you know, I, want, I want people to be better, better husbands and wives and, and, and parents. I want that. I think that's important. Yeah, no, I agree. And that's for, for one to think that it's not all tangled together. <laughs> they're so far gone because <laughs> I learned that very quickly. And um, yeah, so what, what kind of, and, I, and this is, I'm sure unique by people too, um, but what does that look like in commitment financial or, you know, when they're going into something like this and they're obviously it's, there's money involved to pay a coach and, you know, I'm sure some evaluate that investment and they're like, I don't know if this is, this is worth it right now because we've got to figure out X, Y, and Z for our business. But what does the financial commitment look like on your end? And then what do you kind of see? As well, your- every, every coach coaches differently and charges differently. It's been amazing right. to me to see the range. Sure. Uh, <clears throat> what I tell people is whatever you pay a coach is the least expensive part of the coaching process. Your time is the most expensive part because yeah. you're going to be in front of that person. In my case, you're going to be in front of me an hour and a half every week. Yeah. It's going to take you half an hour to get to me. So you've got two and a half or three hours of your time. And, you know, if that executive is a $200 an hour person, you know, they're paying $600 of their time just to sit in front of me. Right. Okay. Before they even pay me. That's then you add on the, the fact that we're, they're going to leave me with some things to do that they want to do. I mean, we call it homework, but it's really what they asked to do. Right. And it's going to be, and it's going to be helping them and growing their business or growing their family relationships. That's going to take some time and effort. So there's another thing that they're going to have to account for. Then there's the money. I try, I don't yeah. Some coaches coach like counselors. They do it by the session. I don't do that. I coach by, I, I'm on a retainer, basically. Uh, I don't mind telling him. I charge my clients $1,500 a month. And some months I'll coach them five times. Some months I'll coach them four. Right. Um, if they're traveling, I might coach them three. But a lot of times if, if, a, if a person that owns a company is going to travel or be gone, uh, I invite them to have me coach their second in command, their yeah. one of their key people. Yeah. And it helps them because they have some things they want to talk, talk about. Sometimes they want to talk about the owner <laughs> <laughs> because it's confidential. That's okay. You know, yeah. I can't tell them about the owner and I can't tell the owner about them. Yeah, that's right. about them. Okay. <laughs> but what it does do is it gives me, it gives me the, uh, the fabric of the company and it gives me insights into maybe why some of the things that are challenging everybody are happening. Yeah. And so it's, it's pretty routine this week. I count, I can't, I coached, three different individuals that were not my client, my, my core client. Um, another thing that happens is, is sometimes uh, people will be having a problem with one of their key people. Right. Maybe they're not being a good manager. And they'll ask me if I would take them on as a client. Uh, and in a situation like that where the owner is paying the bill, the owner's not my client. The owner's the patron. Right. The manager's my client. Right. And so I have to tell the owner, look, I will coach them and I understand your concerns and I will help them become better at what they're doing. But I can't tell you what we talk about. Yeah. So you just have to trust me that I'll, I'll help them be better. Do you have any, and I know I've heard some in the past, any that you can share based off of stories? Um, you know, for someone to think $1,500, it, seemed, it could seem like a lot right now with where they're at. Um, so I know there's been some where you're like helping, you know, you're helping make decisions and shifts and things where they come out of it and they save hundred thousands of dollars. Right. Cause there's things that are happening. Yeah. Well, the, the perspective I give my business owner clients at the front end, I just ask them, what do you have to pay for a decent receptionist? Yeah. And they say, Oh, about 40 grand. And I said, well, I'm less than half of that. And he or she won't make you any money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause it, to, and one thing I've liked about too, it's we're making money, but we're saving money. Like it's all growth. And that's what uh, I've really enjoyed. Cause I've gotten a lot of perspectives from you on, mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yes. I should go after this cause it's gonna help me make more money, but also I should stop doing this or that because I'm actually losing money and I didn't realize it. Um, by, the time, by the time a person has a company, no matter how large or small it is, James, um, it doesn't take very much bad choice to add up to a lot of money. Right. 
sometimes it can kill your company. And so while I don't have an agenda, you know, I have learned a few things growing all these companies through the years. Right. And so if I see something that's, that looks like it's going to be disastrous, no matter how enthusiastic my client is about it, I'm going to ask some questions around that. And I'm going to expect them to give me an answer that makes some kind of sense. And if they can't, I'm going to challenge them to reconsider what they're going to do. Yeah. And I mean, there, there have literally been times when I've had clients come back to me and say, Hey, you just saved me $200,000. Wow. Or a hundred thousand dollars or $50,000. And I don't, I used to kind of go, wow, you know, I don't do that anymore because yeah. I realized that when, you know, if you've got a company that's doing a million dollars, $2 million in sales, it's, it's easy to make a $50,000 mistake. Wow. Yeah. It just is. Wow. So what are you excited about in the future in your role? Um, I know that, um, you're trying to grow a team as well and get to the place where, um, you're going to enjoy more life as well. Cause you know, you've done a lot and in, in this time, but, um, what, what are you excited about in coaching in the future as far as what you're helping build and what you see as business leaders kind of come more part of this? I think what really excites me, James, is this, uh, this kind of fraternity sorority of alumni clients that I have that's, that's growing all the time. Um, you know, even though I don't turn over clients very often, uh, I've been doing this for quite a while and there's, you yeah. know, I coach, you know, 12 to 14 people a week and they know people. And so it's very rare for me to get an opening that stays open for more than like, you know, maybe four or five days. <laughs> right. But the people that I've already coached, they're doing the things that they've learned. I mean, yeah. they've, they solved a lot of problems during our coaching and they've learned a lot of things to, you know, work on it. It's all them. I mean, they're doing all the work. I'm just the coach, yeah. but they're going out there and they're being better leaders and better parents and better spouses, yeah. and better church members and better citizens. And so I think it's the leverage. I mean, I'm 65. I hope I can do this for another five, eight, maybe 10 yeah. years. And I hope in that amount of time, you know, 400, three, 400 people, uh, I'll have the privilege of working with and they will go out and do better than they would have done. Maybe uh, that excites me. That it's, it's a legacy play for me at this point. I mean, you know, um, I tell people the only two things I need from them is their trust and their cooperation Yeah, to be effective. I'm going to charge them money because they don't pay, they don't pay attention unless you charge them money. Right. But you got to, you know, if they can't trust me and they won't cooperate with me, then I can't do anything for them. So yeah. Yeah. But I'm excited. I'm more excited. I'm more excited about being a coach than I think I've ever been about any of the companies I've started. That's awesome. That's cool. So you're booked up. <laughs> You've For got now. a lot. Yeah. For I now. mean, you, it, I'm, <laughs> people are always knocking at your door. So what, what does it look like for someone that's interested in finding another qualified coach? Like how can we help them do that? Well, that's actually why I created success Fort Worth. I, I could have been just Tony Ford coaching. Right. Uh, and you were there in the early days. You were a big help in getting all that put together. And, and you know, you did our website for us and did a great job. Um, one of the things that I have discovered about coaching and coach is, is that we're not particularly good marketers. Hmm. We're, we're, you know, a lot of great coaches are pretty poor marketers. And so I decided to just go out and start meeting some of the other coaches in town and say, Hey, would you like to be a part of success Fort worth? And of course, one of the early questions they said was, well, how much will that cost? My answer was nothing. Yeah. And they kind of looked at me like, well, that makes no sense. And I said, well, it does. If you consider it's a mission, not really a business. Right. My business is coaching my clients. Success Fort worth is about getting coaches, really good coaches to really good people who need them. And so if somebody were to contact me and say, Hey, Tony, I'd like you to coach me and I'm completely full and I don't have time. I'm not going to say, well, I'm sorry, you know, get on a list. I'm going to say, look, there's go back to our website. There's five other coaches there. Their bios are there. Take a look at them. Yeah. Their contact information is right there. Give them a shout there. I can tell you they're good. They yeah. wouldn't be there if they weren't good. We I've spent a lot of time with them. I've checked out the credentials. I've talked to their prior customers. These are good coaches and they'll do a good job of work for you. And so I, that happens, you know, once in a while, a lot of times people will go to them already. Um, yeah. They're all there to see, 
you know, Drew, Drew Jackson, he's a great coach. Susan yeah. St. John, excellent coach. Cynthia, she's an excellent coach. I mean, they're all good. Yeah. And so, you know, my marketing plan is, is, is a two, is two words. Coach well. Yeah. That's it. If I coach well, my clients bring me clients. That's great. That's all I need. That's all I need. That's great. I'm going to put up here, I'm actually going to put up the website just to show. Um, we'll put all the information below, too, in the descriptions uh, with Tony's email and, of course, this website. But, Tony, what's something that, um, I mean, for free, you'll, you'll sit down with them, you'll jump on the phone with them um, yeah. and, and figure out a good plan for them. What does that look like if they're interested? Well, they just they just email me or call me. Yeah, I mean, I, the phone number on there is my cell phone. I'm not hard. Yeah. To, I'm probably the easiest guy in town. <laughs> I'm not hiding. Uh, if I'm in session, then I'll call them right after I get out. I usually give myself an hour or 30 minutes between sessions. Uh, and I'll call them and I'll say, hey, you know, what are you trying to accomplish? Yeah. And they'll say, well, I want to do this, this, and this. And I'll say, well, coaching can do that. Or, you know, coaching doesn't really do that. Because right. there are some things that you can't coach. You can't coach somebody out of addiction. Hmm. So if somebody has an alcohol problem or another kind of problem, you can't coach somebody out of an addiction. Those are not coachable things. Right. But if somebody has uh, some family issues they want to work through, those are coachable. If somebody has a business they're trying to grow and they don't know what direction or what kind of people they need to surround themselves with, those are all coachable things. Okay. Yeah. And so then they'll typically once I talk to them, they'll say, "Well, are you going to be my coach?" And I go, "Well, I don't know." <laughs> I'm saying if, if you want to sit down, if I have capacity, if you want to sit down, come on in and yeah. we'll talk in more depth about your thing. Or look at some of these other folks on the website and give them yeah. the same call you gave me. Their phone numbers are right there and have that conversation with them too. It, it's really fit, James. I mean, I, I really, I can't emphasize enough how important it is for somebody to have a coach that they're comfortable with. Yeah. Because you're going to spend a lot of time with this person. So, by the way, it works both ways. Not That's not everybody. <laughs> not and I know you've done this too. Not everybody that wants me to coach them once I sit down with them. Um, and I'll just I'll just say it straight up. I don't coach bad people. Yeah. If if somebody if I'm talking to somebody and their morals or their yeah. ethics are are just bad, corrupt, whatever. Um, I mean, I won't just put it in their face, but I'll just say, you know, I don't, I don't think I'd be effective coaching you. Right. Because that's I don't want to principle in general. <laughs> I don't want to create, I don't want to create more bad people. I just, that's yeah. not the thing. Yeah, no, that's good. Yeah. That's something that we're, you know, even sometimes money in itself when we really either need it, especially in times like this when people are hurting, it's like, we don't want to sacrifice what we believe and our right. morals and our values. So yeah. that's really important. Okay. Anything else that you want to share? with your wisdom in coaching since I have you on here. Wisdom's a tough thing. You know, when, when people, uh, when people are interviewing me, I guess both ways, uh, <laughs> they say, you know, can you share wisdom with me? And I said, well, I can, but it won't be mine. And they said, well, what do you mean? And I said, well, the only wisdom that I trust comes out of the Bible. That's and cool. I don't love the Bible and make people that are not, you know, believers or, or have a religious persuasion. I coach people that are that are Christians, that are that are Jews, that are Hindu, right. Muslim. I coach all kinds of people. But if they ask me where my frame of reference for gaining wisdom is, I'll I'll take them to Proverbs. Because there's a lot of good stuff in there. And I am I would tell you I'm more practical than I am spiritual. That's but good. it just turns out that the Bible is a very practical book for solving problems and moving ahead in life. And so that's what I use. And so they don't have to believe what I believe. To believe that it works yeah that we talk about it. and so that's that's the kind of wisdom that they're going to hear from me if they if they hear any uh and over the course of my career i've never had one time when a client came back to me and said oh that thing you shared with me didn't work kind of always works <laughs> if you use it right yeah yeah so you know again i'm not i'm not everybody's cup of tea and that's okay no yeah there's, there's good, no though. coaches out there. I just want people to get coached. I, I yes. think I think anybody that has a, a reasonably sized enterprise or is, is in a profession that is confused or struggling uh, or feel like things aren't moving fast enough or maybe too fast, yeah, trying to just gut it out and do it by themselves, that's the long way around. I, I tell people if, if, if I told you to meet me across, if I invited you to meet me across the street, 
you could literally go the opposite direction. Yeah. <laughs> and eventually you would meet me across the street. <laughs> yeah. You would circumnavigate the globe. <laughs> and, and a lot of times people that come to me to coach, they've been doing that. They've been going round and round and round. And finally I go, why don't we just try walking across the street? Right. Would that be helpful? Would you like to save the other 17,000 miles? <laughs> go, yeah, how do I do that? Sometimes I just have to take them by the hand and show them. So, come on. Yeah, so. that's good. And I think the good point, the point there too is uh, it's not always for the hurting. You know, sometimes you need good perspective and direction and uh, you could be thriving in your business, but it's too much to handle or, um, or you're, you're thinking you got to all figure it out. You just need, you know, I think it's good for everyone to personally want to grow. And I think coaches is what does, what does that. So, uh, Tony, I'm so grateful for you uh, coaching me. Uh, you've shaped a lot in quirk and what we're doing. Um, a lot of you in our team building, just like I, I, a lot of what's in your heart and taking care of people, um, is coming out, but also just good sense and direction of things you learned in the past. So thank you one. Um, but uh, two, if y'all are interested in meeting Tony or it's one of his coaches, check out the website um, below. We have the information. Reach out to us if you have any questions and also a Tony will have his information as well. But Tony, thank you so much for, for jumping on today. I really appreciate it. It's always fun to see you, James. I'm glad you guys are doing so well. And by the way, anybody that wants to know, uh, I'll, I'll put my reputation with Kirk Advertising anytime. They do what they say they're going to do. They do good work and they do it at a fair price. So if you're tired of being, you know, kind of run around by some of these big agencies out here that spend a lot of money and don't deliver on their promises, you ought to give Quirk a try. I'm serious. I mean, they do good work. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, man. All right. Well, let's close it out like we do every week. And uh, we're doing it with a little dance, Tony. So are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Oh, we got to the hat in. <laughs> <laughs> oh.